All right. Hello, everyone. Wednesday. It's Whip Wednesday. Today we're going to work on Magnus the Red from um, Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 for the Thousand Sons Army. This is a big model. So he's been assembled and hopefully all of the seams have been fixed. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. He's been uh, primed in black and then in certain areas with the airbrush, I um, added uh, somewhat of a zentho highlighting with white ink from Dalla Rally, FW White Artist Ink. I find that the ink, it's made for airbrushing, so it works really well through it, and I don't get a lot of speckles, so I get a nice smooth transition on them. Let's zoom in on here. This I had to add a little bit of putty work, so it's fine. I do get some speckling from the airbrush, but it's not too bad. So we're going to use our airbrush to get the majority of the work done on this big boy. Also, with the white ink, I was able to use the airbrush and spray concentrate here to make this much brighter. It's a nice glowing orb. All right, so let's get to it. We're gonna be painting them in the standard paint scheme. So with that red skin, Going to a magenta on the arms, which goes into the wings, and then that goes into like a dark turquoise. And then we have the bright, um, shiny steel armor with um, gold inlay. Uh, so we're going to be using this as our guide. Hope everyone's doing well today. So we're gonna start, let's see, let's look at this here. Yeah, he's got red skin. All right, so we're gonna build up the skin. Starting with a base coat of dark purple, moving up through burnt red and, to, and then into bold pyro red. And then I'm going to add some tan flesh into the red to make it look more natural as a red skin tone. These are uh, Pro Krill's Pro Krill paints from Monument Hobbies slash Creature Caster. Unfortunately, can't see this. <laughs> this is Vallejo um, Flow Improver. I just got paint all on it. So it is Airbrush Flow Improver by Vallejo. Vallejo. And we're going to be using, um, it's pretty dirty. <laughs> it's my uh, Badger 105 Arrow, Patriot 105 Arrow. All right, so let's get to it. Before I get too far in, let's put them in my... Spectacles. All right, so we're just going to add a few drops into it. Uh, the of uh, the flow improver 
and then a few drops of the dark purple. Roughly a one-to-one -one mitts. I have my scrubby brush. I apologize for the noise. Not sure if that will be coming through. They're mowing the yard outside. So. so I don't need a whole lot in there. Because the majority of of the area is covered by the armor. Let's add a few more drops in here. The air on the side of caution. I'm gonna make a little bit more than I that I probably need. I'd rather have more than not enough. I'm just spraying it on my paper towel, make sure it's working. has a 0.3 needle so it's very it's for nice fine detail so I don't get a, a large spray so I can get right in here real nice and close brush control here. Just getting it right in there. So we'll spray up on the wings here about at the picture her it goes all the way up to these feathers so all the way up to here This is the time that they do this right by my window. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too loud and it, they shouldn't be too long with it.
We're just getting all the areas. It's going to be red. I'm starting with a uh, purple base coat. It gives me my, my shadows. You know, starting from dark to light. Working from dark to light. It's adjusting the music there. Music for today's stream is by the talented Adrian von Ziedler. You can check out his work on uh, social media on Facebook at Adrian von Ziedler. The link is down below. It's such a cool color, this dark purple. It's a nice, cool tone, temperature-wise, as well as it's awesome. So he's got some feathers here on his uh, ankles or back of his legs. I'll just make sure I get the base of that, this color. here under his butt flap. Rotating them around to make sure I get all the areas I want. Actually, his hands at the bottom of his um, his feet. It goes from red to magenta to dark purple. So we'll go ahead and pull out our magenta that I have here on the my desk. And then we'll use the purple transparent purple, which is a very dark. It's even darker than this. So we can filter areas. So you don't need an airbrush to do this. It does just speed up the process and you can have, you'd be a little more control and have nice smooth blends with it. Now that they cut the grass out there, my allergies are going to act up. So I can get nice smooth application with the airbrush and it does speed it up. Uh, that only took me about roughly 10 minutes maybe, maybe not even that. So just checking all over, make sure I got all the, all the areas that I wanted. 
I'll be coming back in with the transparents to kind of add shadow and everything, so. All right. I'll set him up here for a minute. We'll go ahead and clean out our brush. The airbrush. All I'm using is just an old cheap, old uh, coffee mug. Dumping out the paint in it and then just rinsing it out. Taking my grubby brush. All I did was that with that is just come in here and just scrub, make sure I get all the paint off the side, dump that out, take my paper towel, you don't want to sweep. Need to make sure that you're in, um, rinsing it out really good because um, even though the cup may look clean you still have paint down in here so I'm just using this um, this water bottle with um, curved nozzle to flush out the paint Sometimes it might take a little bit long just to get those out, get the paint out. Just take your time, no hurry. Gives enough time for the, the paint to dry on the model. So now I'm adding some Badger spray through airbrush cleaner. I think it's basically just um, some water and isotope alcohol. It's a cleaner. So you see that I thought it was clean, but it's spraying, still spraying through out purple. So I just use this to spray through and clean out the out the cup and inside. I might have to do that a couple times. Between the uh, water and the cleaner. All right, so now I'm just spraying some water through it. And you can see that it's pretty clear. Let's make sure it's clear. I have the cup pretty full, so I'm not going to spray that all into my um, paper towel. I have this little container. It's one of the best things that you can get for your airbrush. It's got a nice holder. I think it's Iwata. I think it's from Iwata, but it's just a, uh, you know, it's a glass container with a lid and you just spray into it. It's got a filter, you change out the filter, but this is mainly what I like about it. It's um, got the handle. It's, you know, pretty small. I can just keep on my desk. All right, so we're clean. Just checking out my thing, my hand here. So we're now ready to go to the next color, which will be burnt red. I don't need to do a um, a midtone between the purple and this because it's thin enough with the airbrush 
that it'll it'll just it'll go and it's automatize, atom automatize whatever that term is. It's thin enough to where it'll blend out. So I just got my burnt red in here. Add a few drops. Mainly why I'm adding the the flow improver is so I don't get um, tip dry where paint's drying on the tip and that makes it difficult for the paint to come through. The uh, Pro Drill paints are designed for airbrushing as well as for paint brushing. It's not thin paint, they're pretty thick. And uh, thinning, they take to thinning very well. Right, so that's the color I want. So you can see from the purple to the red. We're going to have a nice build up of color here. So with my um, you know very small thirty point three detail brush, I can get right in there and just apply paint right onto the muscles on the raised areas. So I'm just pushing down to get air out and then just gently pulling back to get the paint to come out. So, so you can still see that purple in there. And when I do a, a thin glaze of red and purple of the transparents over it, that'll help blend it together. So just following the the muscle structure here. Like I would do with a with a brush. I'm just using the airbrush to get in there. And these big models are perfect for practicing with this because they're they're large enough that you can get really great um, skin tones or, or build up blending. Sorry about that. on his face, that's all right. So all I'm doing is just very lightly pulling back to where I get just get a, almost like a hint of the paint coming out. I'm not worried about the, um, the tattoos in here, on here, on that skin, because with the, um, I'll be doing like dark, shade washes right in there and that'll flow right into those areas and make them pop more.
So we're already got a nice skin tone at the moment. You can still see it. The paint's thin enough that you can see the purple coming through. So very nice build up very quickly too. So. It just takes practice. You know, you're gonna be painting a whole bunch of models to figure it out. Take your time. The wings have um, will be magenta, so I'll add the magenta into that. <laughs> Beef in the hole, hello! How are you doing today? <laughs> that was a cool little moat. Painting Magnus the Red, we're building up his uh, skin tone with the airbrush. right in here underneath his wing to get his hand here. Trying to get back here behind his arm, the back of his arm. I'm not worried if I get overspray on the the no, on the armor. I'm gonna paint over that in a minute anyways. This would be great for any uh, red skin, like demons or uh, any red skin creature. Oh, 
Hopefully that, uh, that's my air compressor. Hopefully it's not too loud on the stream. So I'm gonna mess around with the uh, the sound. So none of the, a lot of the um, background noise. Hopefully that doesn't come up and it's too loud. So I'm just concentrating more to the upper portions, more brighter lights. <laughs> Crowds cheer! Hey, Cor, how you doing? Magnus the Red is today's pink job. Playing with the airbrush today. So if you have any questions on how to airbrush and such, or what I am doing, feel free to pop those in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I like my haircut. <laughs> it's my sexy haircut. All right, so down here on his feet, um, it's not red, it goes down into the purple, so I'm gonna just keep that dark purple down there. I'm not gonna bother with that part. And then the wings, uh, I will have the black, I mean the purple, and then it'll go up to the magenta. So when I get to the magenta color, we can add that in there. So I'm just going through and um, applying more paint on the raised areas. Oh, he's from, um, it's for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. He's the, uh, he's one of the Primarchs. He's a big model. Here, I'll zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. So he's a red model. Um, let me see here. Show you in scale to, you know, besides my my hand, we'll put it in scale with the. Uh, this is a Sisters of Battle, which is a normal size model. So she. She comes up to his knee, so she can like kick him in the in the feet in the shin. Yeah, he's pretty big. He's a big one. This is like the third Primark that I've painted. <laughs> Which zombie dragon do you have? Do you have the more recent plastic one or the old metal one? Because my daughter, she's got the plast the new plastic sculpt, and that thing's huge. And um, I have one of the old metal ones that I need to dig out. Okay, the big one, yeah, the big plastic one. Yeah, that one's neat. My daughter also has the uh, the Terra Geis that she loves to play in our games. Yeah, I have, it's not the original, original one. It was the special, uh, it came with a special vampire count character. It's the one that's up on its um, hind legs. 
<laughs> this guy? He wasn't too bad. Hey Thrawn, how you doing? Yeah, he 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 wasn't too bad. Um there are a bit of um you know, because like his arms and stuff were like two two halves to glue together, so the seams were kind of a pain. So if this gets to be too bad, I can add up um I mean I can see it myself, but I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to dig out that um that metal zombie dragon. I wanna get the original uh metal zombie dragon from I think it was fourth edition Warhammer back in the um late eighties, early nineties. That one I had as a when I first started. And um I had, a, I had a huge undead army that I learned to paint on back in um, 1990 when I first started. And unfortunately, I ended up, I had like over 3,000 points, I think, because I just kept buying more and collecting them and, and painting and learning to paint. Didn't have a whole lot of places to play during that time. So I just kept honing my skills. And. I ended up having to sell it back in 2000 to help um, move. Good to hear, Thrawn. Good to hear that you're doing good. It's Wednesday. It's time to paint. Every time, every day is a good day when you paint. And we're working on Magnus the Red here. Yeah. I didn't get as much money as I, I would have liked, but it was back back in the day. But uh, I have to go find some, you know, go through my old pictures and see if I can find them. But what I'm doing now is uh, I'm starting to recollect the old, um, those old models and rebuilding my army and painting them, you know, now. I have a lot of the uh, the old sculpt of um, the placid skeletons, which I like better. The multi parts. I'm not too. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the new skeleton models. Yeah, nostalgia overload. I'm kind of building. It's kind of a, a mix between the old and the new. I've joined a um, old hammer Facebook group that's local here. Yeah, they're so they they the scale wise they look really tiny and small and fragile. My daughter has them in her army and she likes them. So, I mean, I like the idea of them. They have a little more um, cloth and stuff on them, so it's really cool. Yeah, someone was selling their dead, their uh, undead army. <laughs> she is badass. She is. And she's carrying the tradition, excuse my arm, of learning to paint with a dead army. Here's Nagash. Zoom in on him. This is uh, her Nagash that she's working on. So he's, he's higher than Magnus just because of the spirits, but he's about, he's the same, he's the same scale of it. But yeah, she's she's learning to paint on the on her army. Uh, she joined me the other night, and she comes in every every once in a while and paints for about half hour to an hour, slowly chipping away on this. So. <laughs> he's a he's such a great army. I mean, straight a uh, great piece. I need to get one for myself for my death army. But yeah, what happened is um, a local, yeah, she's painting this. Right now she's just putting base coats on it. You know, she was working on the, the, the books last time. But uh, yeah, she's, I, um, I primed it, Zenithal highlighted added more white for the spirit so they'd be brighter. But uh, she's she's been adding all the paint to it. 
<laughs> yeah. Yep, she knows how she knows what she's doing. <laughs> when we look at pictures in the excuse my arm. I have it on the shelf in front of me. Um, yeah, a local gamer, local uh, Facebook group was he was selling his death, his uh, undead army. And so I went to go meet him to, to pick it up. It was a huge army for a great deal. I forgot exactly how many is in it. A lot of skeletons. The flesh hound. <laughs> yeah, it's you you find great deals. Um So I went I went to go meet him and I took my daughter with me and this was a f three, four years ago. And I was I was buying it for I was planning on buying it for myself, but she came with me and she's like it's like oh that's cool, is that for me? I'm like, well, are you going to play with me? Are you going to play the game with me? She's like, yeah, if you get that for me. I'm like, all right. So I ended up buying the army for her. So, Yeah, she got me. But it got her into the game. And we played. She's been beat. I think we play like five games. And she's she's four and five ahead. So she's good. <laughs> First time we played where she brought out Nagash. And she's looking at the rule, at the spell. She's like, oh, I can do this, and then I can do this, and I can do this. She was able to do it like seven spells in a row or something. It was crazy. <laughs> Thanks. It was so funny because when we play, she starts to giggle and like hysterically. She's like, ah, I got you, ha ha ha, type thing. So. Yeah, go ahead, Core. Post it in my Discord, and I can chat in there. That way, I can look right at it. Yep, sure. You got some Dark Eldar and Dark Elves. Oh, nice for twenty bucks. Of the Devil, yeah, yeah. They just don't understand. Yeah, and Ed's girlfriend, um, that big undead army, I had them and I was showing them to her. It was over at her house and her parents were there. And uh, they accused me of being um, worshipers. I worship these little skeleton models at night, so they didn't approve. She thought it was really cool. She's like, wow, you're very talented, you know, painting these things. These are really cool. And I got her into painting, and um, she wasn't painting the skeletons. I had a bunch of, like, Empire, and she was painting those. She had a blast. Her son, I think he was eight at the time, showed him how to paint. He was, we sit and we paint. <laughs> yeah, the Dark Elves are kind of nasty. They're, they're nasty. <laughs> They're idols, and I'd, I'd sit there and, and uh, worship them. It's like, okay. They were real big hypocrites, too, so... It, it, it got really bad. It was one of, the, one of the main reasons why we broke up, unfortunately. Painting is evil, yeah. Yeah, if I had demons, that would have really scared her, but it was, it was undead, so it was like all skeletons. I also had Skaven. But I did have some um, Empire troops because I had the uh, Mordheim starter set at that time. That's when it first came out. Way back then. It was uh, 98, 99. 1998, 99.
yeah, they said that I was evil, but they're sitting there and, and watching all these horror films and, and <laughs> such. But anyways, we're not talking about uh, religion stuff here. Yeah, I have, I have so much stories about, about it, but I'm not, that's not what this place is about. So, I, I hopefully, no, no offense to anyone. Yeah, Mordheim, I, I think Mordheim is one of the best, uh, the best um, specialist games by Games Workshop. I love that game. I love the whole idea of the, the three-dimensional. My wife, uh, now, you know, when we first got together and, and when we first got married, she really liked that game. That, that was the one um, game that she, she would play with me. She liked the, uh, the Sisters of Sigmar, the Battle Nuns. Oh. That's good. I just, you know, people lurking. But that's that's one of my rules. We don't talk about religion stuff, so I don't want to get too far into it. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't play as much with me with the tabletop games, and she has painted with me. She does other art. She does um, 2D art and, and digital art, so. <laughs> she did like playing uh, Lord of the Rings with me too. She liked that game. Last time we played a tabletop game, it was The Hobbit. We played the the, the Hobbit and stuff. So. Her and the kids, they like playing. They'll they'll play the games with me because they know they can beat me. Which they do. <laughs> it's not that I'm I'm not that great. I mean I'm a good player, but they just beat me. I don't care. It's you know I don't play the game to win. I just play to have fun. So Yeah, the Lord of the Rings game is really fun. I was saying that Mordheim was a great specialist game. Lord of the Rings I is their bet I to me is their best game the rules for it are are nice and stuff and the visuals can't beat it it's lord of the rings all right so let's go ahead and clean this out got it sitting in here for a while I do like uh, Age of Sigmar, and I do like 40k. Uh -oh. Hello, Ninja! How you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I would have more fun if my dice didn't suck. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Ninja. And usually with my with when I'm playing, it's it's like a curve. When I f start playing, either my dice are rolling really well, and then by near the end of the game, they start to s roll badly, or they start rolling badly at the beginning of the game, and then get better, you know, later on. So <laughs> it's it's really weird. Start playing. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons with the family and I have the worst luck rolling dice in that campaign it was crazy I kept dying or or the worst my wife she was the, the cleric and so she was the healer and she, She's telling me, you know, I'm tired of saving your butt any, um, all the time. You need to get better. <laughs> so, it was really funny. 
So the the kid and the kids were teasing me about that. I was like, Dad, geez, Dad, you're terrible at this. My friend who was who was showing us the game and DM, um, DMing, he started to feel bad. He's like, I don't want to try to kill you off. But you're just so bad at this. <laughs> it was funny. But I don't play to to win. I play to have a good time. If I'm sitting there with my friends and we sit and we talk more than playing the game, then it's a good night. All right. So for today, we're painting, excuse me, Magnus the Red. Zoom in on this bad, bad boy. It's a fun game. They're all fun games, so. Magnus. So I'm building up his red skin. We start with a, uh, a dark purple undercoat, base coat, and then building up our layers through the airbrush. This is, um, so we started with dark purple. It's nice blue, blue purple. Yeah, he's got big nipple spikes. He's the bird man. He's the bird man with the nipple spikes. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully won't have issues with Twitch with this. And then we're um, adding some burnt red. So we just did burnt red. Now we're going to go to a brighter red, bold pyro red, all by uh, Pro Krill, Mo Pro Pill, that Pro Krill paints by Monument Hobbies and Creature Caster. Then we're going to add some tan flesh into that red, make it look more natural. So whenever you're doing um, different types of colored skin tones, I find adding um, a flesh tone to your later highlights, to build up your highlights, makes it look more natural. Whether it's blue skin, red skin for a demon, things like that. So you just slowly add in this as your, you know, your final highlights, or at the, the, the highest point. So where, and, and then the shadows we're gonna have like purples and, uh, a darker purple in there, maybe some green. Having a little bit of like an olive green in the shadows will help offset the red. And so it won't, it will look again, more natural. And it's the same idea of, with any skin tone. I'll do my, um, I'll start with a dark purple tone and then build up the, the skin, whether it's Caucasian skin a uh, dark skin would be, you know, like a dark brown. A demon skin would, I'd start adding my, I'd be red instead of a, then a base skin tone. Here's my shadow skin that I start with. Uh, if I were to do blue skin, be the same idea, where I start with a purple and then a blue and then building up the blue and then as the final highlights, uh, adding flesh tone into it. Green would be the same. Okay, so we're adding um, my labels covered in paint, but it's uh, Flow Improver by Vallejo. Add in our our red. And this is a little bit um, I 
it's roughly a one to one mets. As I get higher up in the the highlights, I add it goes to about roughly a two to one because I want a little bit more translucency, and that's what the flow improver is doing. It's just it helps the paint flow well going through the airbrush. Um, it thins it out, but it, it you know instead of um, completely separating, it's still very thin and trans. Lucent. There we go. I worked that red through it. So I'm just checking it on my hand and my paper towel here. It's very thin. Hopefully my compressor is not too loud. I was messing with the levels and hopefully I got it to a point where I'm happy with. So please let me know if you hear that background noise. And make sure that the, the music's not too loud. You can hear me all right. All right. And I'm using a uh, Badger 105 Arrow, a little bit smaller than a normal Patriot, uh, with a 0.3 nozzle. So it's a detail brush that I can get in really tight and add the so I get really tight, it's a more concentrated spray. So I'm just building up the highlights like I would with a, a brush. And right there. So I'm, catch, I'm hitting the raised portion of the shoulder muscles, but I'm keeping that purple and that previous layer in the shadows. And with it being a bit translucent, it blends more into the undercoat or previous layer. So I'm just uh, pushing down for the air and then just gently pulling back to let uh, paint out. I'm not going full throttle to let all the paint out. I'm just slowly adding the paint. And that just comes with practice to get control. You know, You get in closer for finer lines. You go further back to get bigger lines. So these spots are just because I was staying in that one spot too long. That's why I built up. Here I kind of stayed, stayed spraying too long in that area, so it's it's a lot of um, trial and error.
Get in there in his face. Got his ears. This one? Yes. It is. I think it came with um, a 0.5 needle, and I just got the uh, the fine detail um, needle kit and just switched it out, which was the nozzle and the, the needle is smaller. The, um, this is my Badger, this is the Badger Patriot 105. It's similar, it's just a larger cup size. And this has a point five in it. I use this for all my um, priming and base coats. The point five needle is a larger needle, so the spray comes out much. Uh, it's a wider spray. This is just more finer, and you could use the um, the point three, the detail needle kit, and switch out this one as well. I just got. I just have two of them, with a quick release. And uh, so I can switch them out. But yeah, either the um, the arrow one is really nice. The difference is it has a smaller cup size. So as a beginner one, I, I suggest the Badger Patriot 105. And I am sponsored by Badger, and I do have a discount uh, that I will share. Um, I'm not sure if it works yet, because I just got it. Uh, if you go to their website and put in um, uh, Hope Mini Paint as a code, you should be getting, uh, you should get a 10% discount on their website. So, please let me know if that works for you. Otherwise, I need to talk to Ken and say, hey, this doesn't work. But he told me that's, that is supposed to. Yeah, um, Badger Airbrush is really nice. I started with a, uh, a Masters Airbrush uh, set that I got off of um, uh, Amazon. I think it was like $70, $50 or $70, something like that, where it was an airbrush, the, the, a small compressor, and a hose. And it was a good starting thing. And I started with that, and then um, I actually I, I won the Badger Airbrush at a convention and that was one of the prizes and he was there so I was like hey I'll try this and so I really like it and I've been using the airbrush more and more it took it took me a while to get used to it but just like any new um, you know wanting to learn something there's that learning curve beginner learning process that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> But once once you understand it and it clicks, then it's like, oh well, god, this is great. So, I'm actually at the point now where I'm comfortable with the airbrush and explaining it and and showing the basic, you know, understanding of it, how to how to clean it, how to thin the paint, how to how to do proper stuff. I started out with just priming it. And then I then I started doing base coats. Now I'm doing um, you know detail work and and other stuff. So and uh, last November at the local convention here, uh, Rene um, Renegade open uh, Renegade open here in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I'm at. Uh, Ken from Badger, he was there. And I was in the same room. I was um, promoting my commission and selling painted models and all that fun stuff. And I asked him if I could, if Badger would sponsor me, what I needed to go by doing that. And, 
and uh, he agreed. So now I'm sponsored by Badger, so I need to actually get more information and put that down below so people know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not a replacement to regular painting with a brush. It's just an added tool. You know, it's just, it, it just helps. Because I could sit here and I could do this same stuff with a big brush. And just using an airbrush helps speed it up. People complain, like, oh, you're cheating. You're, you know, pure painters don't use an airbrush. That's what I say. How, how am I cheating? <laughs> you know, I'm saving time by doing it. You know, it's not a competition. <laughs> I'm saving time, I, you know, by doing this. I mean, it definitely helps when I'm wanting to get a bunch of uh, painted models done and under the table so I can play them. So I can just sit here, you know, just do quick base coats with the airbrush. Run a, you know, run a wash over them. Adding some highlights here on the raised, you know, upper portions of the skin, the muscles. I forgot the, his back is a bit exposed back here underneath his hair. So now I can just start to come in and add more highlights and build up uh, brighter areas. Slowly build up those highlights with this color. I mean, just more recently I've been able and feel more comfortable to where I'm able to do this, these upper areas with the airbrush. Um, where's that troll? Oh, the hill giant I did, I can't reach him. I did a lot of um, that Reaper hill giant I did last week, I think. I did a lot of um, airbrush. I did this, you know, an airbrush on that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been, I'm looking at the feathers too. I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Airbrush. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> you know, just paint bravely. You know, just jump in and do it. If I mess up, just paint over it. That's what's so great about painting is, you know, 
don't be afraid to try new things and, and try different things. If you mess up, you know, you're learning from it. Just paint over it and start again. The, um, if you're in my Discord channel, if not, go to Holt Miniature Paint in Discord. Uh, in the, um, the gallery, I, I painted a, um, large one sit scale. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you learn from the mistakes, you know. Don't expect to go right in and know everything and just take your time. We're all on a we're all on this painting journey. We're all on uh, different points of that. And it's all it's, you know, learning. Make mistakes, you fall down, get back up, keep going. You don't give up. In the gallery on my Discord channel, uh, I have um it's a one sits scale, so it's roughly the size of a Barbie doll, um, height of a figurine, a resin figurine of um, the main character from Samurai X anime. And I did that with the airbrush. No, I haven't looked at it, Cor. I'll look at it after, um, I'll look at it after the stream and I'll chat with you about it. All right, is that okay? That way I can concentrate on that. But with that, with the um, the cloth and everything, I did that with the airbrush and the shading. And I tried to do some of it with a brush, but um, I just, I couldn't get smooth layers on that figure. So I just, I kept going back and using the airbrush on it. Yeah, sure. I'll show you how to do that, that um, the object source lighting with it. Not a problem. I'll look at it after the stream and then um, chat with you. And also for the rest of the people in the stream, if you haven't joined my Discord channel, please do. And if you want uh, critiques, you can put you can post your pictures in that and um, ask me like, you know, how can I do this? How can I achieve this? Just like what Core is talking to me about, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, help out and and give you critiques on your stuff. Oh. All right, so I'm just kind of looking around and seeing how this guy looks really cool. <laughs> I was I was. wondering how I was going to achieve this and it's like, that's great. Thank you, Cor. There's the link to my Discord channel. I just started it up uh, last week, I think, or yeah, about last week or two weeks ago. So please feel free to join that. Feel free to post pictures like your work in progress, completed pictures. All right, so now we're going to start adding our flesh tone. So I still have quite, a, I still have some red in there. Um, it's not all the way to the top. It's just because it's coated the side. So it's about there. So I'm just going to start adding in my tan flesh. And adding the flesh tone, because this is kind of a, a peachy tone, will make the red look kind of salmon color. 
don't worry about it. It's all right. That's what we want. Because when we're done adding all the highlights, we're going to add a very thin transparent red over it. And that will help bring back that dark, bring back that rich red color. So it's kind of hard to see it in there. Let's blow. Got to work out through the red here. So we'll start to get a like almost a, like close to a salmon color, but. I like a, you know, see how it's a little bit lighter. I don't want to add pink. I don't want to add white or a, an ivory color because that will make it look pink. And we don't want this big guy to look pink. Uh, maybe he does. Maybe he wants to, but we want him to look more. Because he's a menacing guy. I mean, he could be menacing in a pink skin, so you never know. <laughs> So we're just doing the same thing. We're just doing the um, the parts that will are catching the light, and I can see where the highlights are. It's it's mainly up towards the top, and you can use your lamps here to see where the light's reflecting and, and the the bright points on it, like on this on the the thumb right there where it's a little bit lighter. That's just a reflection from the light, and so I'm going to use that as my guide and um, spray in this light color. Yeah, he's got a heart of gold. So whenever you're painting red, you kind of want to bring it up to see how it's kind of a, it's got that salmon looking color, pinkish tone. That's all right. When we do our, our uh, transparent layer of red, we're going to bring up this color very bright and it's going to look really weird because it's going to be almost close to a pastel looking color but then adding the uh, transparent paint over glazing it'll filter that all and it'll, it'll blend all the colors together and give that us a nice rich red that we're looking for so whenever you're painting red you, you want to bring it up to a bright color and then wash out, you know, apply like a thin red ink layer or, um, you know, a transparent glaze color over it. Trust me, I didn't go. I haven't gone crazy, so stick stick with me. And if I totally mess it up, I can just paint over it, so it's not a big deal. And the camera is really throwing off the color too, so.
I did a, a bit over, it overflowed, oversprayed, I'm sorry, oversprayed into the fingers here, but when I do those, um, those glazes, because I'm going to do a dark um, purple glaze, and I'm going to spray it right into the, the recesses and the shadows, so that'll help with that. to see it because the wing's in the way. I apologize for that, but he's getting right in underneath there. And there's a spot right underneath his uh, hair. Big old flume of hair. All right. The camera color is really throwing off, off it a bit. All right. I'm going to add some more tan flush. And if it's too bright, it's too uh, too much, I can just add some more of that red. Okay. Oh, wow, that camera's really throwing it off. <laughs> So it's kind of um, like a pink, it's kind of hard to see it on the camera, but the color itself looks like a uh, pink carnation flower. So it's got that very salmon type of color to it. Thing. That's the color I'm working with. So it's very pale, like a pastel red tone. I think after this, I'll do one more highlight where it's really bright. <laughs> yeah, the fighting salmon. <laughs> um, and then we'll do the uh, transparent layers. We should have a Space Marine chapter, the Fighting Salmon. be doing some uh, blood angels so I can paint them this way and then I'll show you know commission piece and I'll show them to them say so, all right here's your stuff they're done the fighting salmon either he'll laugh and get a good kick out of it or he'll kick me a butt No, he's a good guy, so I think he'll get it. He'll get a laugh at it.
Yeah, the charitable tuna. <laughs> And what I can do, you know, once I get all the airbrushing done on this, I will go back in and, and do some brush work on, on the skin to kind of help redefine those areas like on his face. We'll do one more highlight with the skin, with this color. So I think we're getting about now about a one to one ratio. I just keep, you know, it's no exact science. I just add a little bit more and see how the color is. Almost looks like a neon color on there. I'll show it here on the wing. Yeah, it's much brighter. Very pale, that's what we're looking for. Oh, sorry about that. It's getting really close in here on the on the hand. So it's it's really bright, but trust me, when we do the uh, the tinting on it, uh, his hair is going to be kind of like a dark purple, like a, like a black purple. It'd be black with like purple highlights. Flow improver, it's starting to dry.
flip them around here. All right, he's looking very pale. All right. Yeah, I'm using the um, the paint guide. Uh, this is the instruction manual. So I'm just using this as a guide. His hairs is a dark purple. Skin lesions, where? Right here. Is that what you're talking about? He's got like um, runes cut into his skin here. Right there. It's kind of hard to tell. You talking about those areas right there? Those dark areas? Right there. Those are, um, they look like metal cables that are actually embedded in his skin. Same here. These little spots. Is that what you're talking about? They're like little metal, um, Like right there. It's a little uh, metal cable bits embedded in them. Yeah. A lot of the 40K stuff has like flush tubes attached to them that's got parts of it ripped open and it shows like the metal cable underneath. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about on this typhus model. Right here, he's got this cable, it's like a flesh cable, and it just has like parts of it ripped open and there's a little uh, metal cable inside it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's you know what it is just an added little thing a lot of the 40k stuff has those as well as a bunch of skulls yeah I just I don't understand the whole point of the Kate the flesh cable because it's flat it's skin it's always painted like skin but it's got these um mechanical tube underneath it so this is a typhus that I painted up. It was a fun model too. I don't know if it's to go with lore, you know, rules, fluff or what. Yeah, I'm ten I'm starting to see more and more cables on certain ones. It's mainly like uh, Space Marine type or Chaos Space Marine characters. So I don't know why he's got them. So I'm just cleaning out my airbrush here. Just flushing it out with water. I'll make sure I get all that color all that color out.
The music that's streaming in the background is by a uh, very talented and wonderful artist. His name is Adrian Von Ziegler. You can find his work. Um, if you have Facebook, you can go to his Facebook page. Adrian Von Ziegler. Um, he's also on Twitter and I think Instagram. Uh, the link for him is down below. He's got a nice variety of music. Uh, I have the majority of his the Celtic fantasy type. He also had he also does um, uh, ancient samurai and uh, pirate Viking music. So I have some of those too. It's just nice to have have it in the background while I'm painting, so it's very relaxing. All right. So he is looking rather pinkish. So we're going to give him a uh, all over glaze of red, very thin down red, which I don't have here. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> Transparent red. So, um, and before we do that. I need to step away real quick to grab something from the other, from away from the desk, and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna just click it to my uh, be back soon. So please hang out, listen to the music, and I'll be back in about a minute or two. Be right back. All right. Hopefully we didn't leave, lose too many people. Hello, I'm Casey, I'm back. We're painting Magnus the red. He's looking rather salmon color right now, but don't fret. We are going to add some more. We'll add a transparent glaze filter color, whatever you want to call it. But it's basically a very thin um, color thin layer of color over it and it will help enrich and bring it all together. So we'll, we'll get them back to being big red and meany. I need to clean out my brush, my airbrush. We're using the airbrush for this.
as you can probably hear with the uh, compressor going on right now. Hopefully that's not too loud for everyone. I was met, I was working on the um, the volumes and the filtering of the sound of the audio to try to cut that out. So please let me know if that if you can hear that compressor when it goes off or not. Overall, it's pretty quiet, but every once in a while, you know. It's one of those background noises you don't always want to hear, especially on a stream, so. All right. So we're going to start with our transparent red. Just a few drops in there, and then we're going to add, it's roughly going to be um, about four or five parts flow improver to one part, excuse me, one part transparent red. We're going to make it very thin, where it's just, it's so thin, it's just got a hint of color in it. Uh, excuse me. I want it, it's best to be on the side of caution and have it thinner than too thick. And I'm doing a test where I take my brush, bring it up to the side of the cup here, and pushing, hopefully you can see that, pushing the bristles against the side. If the, you can see the bristles through the paint, very easily, then it's it's quite thin. So you just you want it to be where you're seeing the bristles coming through the paint. If you do not see the bristles, the paint is too thick. So it's just it's not an exact science. Unfortunately, I can't say one part paint to to three parts flow improver or thinner. You just have to work with it. And the best bet is to just uh, trial and error. It's a lot of trial and error. All right, so I'm shooting it through. And you can see it's, it's quite thin. I can still see the red on my glove coming through. So this is the highlights we have. That's why I wanted it to be a very bright highlight. So I don't lose those highlights coming through. So we're now knocking it back to that red. It might be one layer, it might be multiple layers. So it's best to have very thin paint and slowly build it up than one thick paint because I spent all the time building up these highlights. I don't want to lose those of the, of the layers. So. So you can start to see the red in there. All right, Thrawn, thanks for stopping, my, stopping in. Have a good one. See you soon. So I'm just slowly adding this on there. So just gent just very gently pulling back the trigger that we can get paint to come out.
see I'm starting to get that red coming back in and it's <laughs> throwing off my camera. So he's starting to get, you know, getting red, getting angry here. Sorry. If you have the uh, contrast paints from Citadel, those these those work really well through the airbrush for this technique too. So. So now, quite happy with that. Let's go ahead and clean out our airbrush. Thank you, Cor. That is my Instagram. Cor is working hard on posting those for me. I appreciate it. He really wants those cookies. <laughs> on, uh, On all my uh, social medias, I, I like to show work in progress and finish pictures. So. so please consider following me on those outlets. That's my Twitter. <laughs> and uh, he'll probably, he'll be posting up my, uh, the Discord, yeah, there's the Discord, all the stuff there. There's all the stuff. He's, he's helping me out, and I appreciate it. On the Discord, if you... On that, um, when I get critique, you know, when I ask me a question on how what you're doing, uh, you know, there's a session for work in progress that you can share your, your work in progress pictures of miniatures. If you'd like to have a critique, just let me know. I'm more than happy to uh, help out. <laughs> the multi-link works. <laughs> and also feel free to ask any questions of what I'm doing or just in painting in general in the, in the chat. So now that we're building up our uh, red, and I'm quite happy with it, that's just one layer. I might have, to, I might go back and do another one, but I want to start adding in some darker shadows. So we're going to do that with some transparent purple from Pro Drills. Their transparent paints are awesome. 
especially for this. They're an acrylic paint. You know, they're acrylic based, just like the regular paints. But you just, you start to add, you start to thin them with water and um, you get that translucency, but still hold on to the vibrancy of a normal paint. So it's really nice. They're not quite ink, like an ink or, you know, you can use them as a same idea as uh, washes or glazes, but that's not quite an ink, like an artist ink, which will leave a, um, they dry matte, so you don't get that glossy finish that an ink would do. Because, um, I have it on it, so it's not extremely shiny. I had that problem with the contrast paints when I was uh, painting cave squigs on Monday. It, those have a bit of a, a glossy finish, and I really don't didn't care for that. That's why I like these. I should have used these on that. So I'm repainting those. And I'm going to be using the same technique, probably, that I'm showing tonight. So, then down this uh, purple. Very uh, pigment rich, so very uh, dark. So this one I need to thin a little bit more. And all I'm using is a flow improver from Vallejo. So it's roughly, you start off with about a 10 part, 10 to one, 10 parts of flow improver to one part paint. But I keep checking. That's why I do a lot of, I test on my hand here. So you can still, It's such a thin layer, it's just setting over on top of the previous color. So it's giving it that hint of purple, but it's still showing red through it. Yeah. See. On my skin, you can still see the, the skin coming through, but it's got like just a hint of purple. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just gently pulling back on the trigger to let paint out. There it is, very intense right there. But just slowly pulling back, I get a very thin consistency. Just show it here on the, the wings. So that's what I'm, I'm working towards. And with this uh, 0.3 detail needle that's in here, I heard a snap, so I wasn't sure if it was um, that I broke something. It just caught on my rubber glove and it snapped the glove. <laughs> Always worried about breaking pieces off. So here on his bicep, where it's already dark, I wanna I wanna enhance that color more with this. With that purple. So right here on his you can see it around his horn here. You know, down here in the shadow behind this breastplate. So in between the muscles, up underneath his chin. Just very thin. 
in there, and that helped the red pop more. Stay right there on the shoulder. So I'm getting there really close with this. And I'm just barely pulling back on the trigger to, to um, get the paint to come out. Just working on the on the hand here. I apologize if I go off camera. Don't mean to. So I'm just reinforcing the shape, the shadowing on here. Kind of hard to show it because of the other bits, like the wings getting in the way. So on the wings, it blends up um, purple with some magenta on it, but I got some overspray here, so I'm just using my this color to kind of help darken that. Flip his hand over so we can get the back of his hand. So just deepening the shadows. not to drop in the model as well. Add some color back into his face here.
right here under the thumb. Those little mechanical bits right there, we're just going to darken those up with the purple. Oh, sorry. Getting real close so I can see it. He's got this little tattoo. Here, we're just adding some sh to help define the shadow of it. Same with those feathers there. So his feet actually get a darker purple. So he's got these shin guards, but it's it starts about just below the knee, and it's a blend from the red down into a dark, to very dark purple. The hands go from a red um, into a magenta. And then, um, yeah, I might add a little bit more purple, um, you know, further down, but we'll start with the red going down into the magenta, but we want to get these uh, dark shot. You want to get the shadows on there. So, I was just, so we're using this. He also has the feathers on there, which are turquoise. So he's a very brightly colored god. That's his tail right there. That's a tail that's hanging down. Not other appendages. He's not that anatomically correct. in the way. I would have painted him without the wings, but he's got bits that are skin tone, so it's just easier to do the whole thing. Now we got the purple in. I can do another thin layer of the red over it, and that'll um, have the you know make the purple look like it's under the the skin. So you have that translucency because if you look at skin, you have a bunch of different colors in it. There's like purple and reds and 
and even greens and blues under the skin. So that's what I'm trying to do, very thin, transparent layers. All right. So now we'll go back and do another very thin <laughs> Andy. Tell Andy I said hi, honey. Everyone say hi to Danielle. That's my wife. <laughs> and everyone say hi to Andy, too. That's a good friend of ours. Danielle, tell Andy I'm painting a um, a red demon with uh, large nipple horns. She'll she'll get a kick out of that. <laughs> oh, she's watching me. Why does she say hi? Hi, Andy. Just cleaning out the purple from here real quick. Normally, I wouldn't mind with the purple being in this because it. Because <laughs> I'm just using red, but I want a pure red. I don't want purple added into it. So, when you're cleaning your airbrush, you want to make sure between colors that it's thoroughly clean. And for the most part, it's mainly just spraying through it. bit of purple in there. Certain colors are, are can be a pain to get out of the airbrush. Um, you know, your reds, your purples, whites. A white is very, can be div very difficult to get out. And you want to make sure that that white is all out when you're spraying with it. Because if you're switching from, say, a white to a blue, if there's any bit of white in there, and you might not see it in the cup, but it could be down in here. Because the, the paint comes down in here, the, the air blows it out, and it comes out to here. If you have any bit of white, you know, that's dry that's in there, a little bit of white's gonna hit that other color and sure enough, you're gonna have a very bright color. So if let's say you wanted a very a dark blue or a blue color, if you have that little bit of white in there, it's now baby blue or sky blue. So I just take your time, make sure it's cleaned out. I always spray um, some water through it after you know, once I get it clean. To make sure it's cleaned out. All right, I think we're good. So now we're gonna go back to our transparent red. 
And this I want to make very thin. So it's just a, a drop or two at the bottom. Quite a lot of flow improver. It's better to have too thin than too thick of paint because you can slowly build up your tr the layers. So I'm just spraying through to make sure I get my red coming through. <laughs> There's Andy. Hi, Andy. Yay. Andy, you can call me uh, KC in this one. Initials K and C. <laughs> That's it. There you go. See, I told you I was painting demon with uh, nipple horns. <laughs> All right, so we're spraying the red. It's very thin on my arm here. Yeah, no HUDs for him. You have to do that very, you know, the high fives from, from a distance. He is a king of social dist distancing, everyone, with those. He also is probably a big fan of Madonna. In her, uh, what was it, 90s, 80s, 90s, <laughs> whatever she was wearing those big old things. All right. What's going on here? There we go. My air hose was getting stuck around my feet. So just a very thin red over the model will help bring it all together because some of the um, the purple is a bit harsh in areas so doing a thin layer thin transparent glaze over it will help blend it all together So even this is going to be purple, I still want to put this red down here to kind of help blend it. You're not going to see it over the dark purple, but it just adds a hint of color. Rotating the model around. Sorry if I'm off, off the camera. See how it's now a little bit more um, blended together. You still get that red, brightness red, but then the, in the shadows, that purple.
And this is what's great with the airbrush, using um, lasers and stuff over it. It just helps smooth out the, the arms and all the muscles. And just going... <laughs> Thank you, Andy, for following. Really do appreciate it. Glad you could make it in. Thank you for the support. So having that going up to that those bright highlights um yeah i can still see the highlights through this translucency so that's why i needed to make it really bright and it did look kind of oh my gosh like what did he do but now adding the the transparent paints back onto it you now have this bright this deep dark red skin tone I'm just looking around, make sure I got everything. All right, so now we're gonna add some um, more color to, you know, the faded off on his hands. And um, the I got a nice blend here from the airbrush on his legs, so I'm happy with those. So we're just going to add some magenta into here. And I might add some more of that purple back into it. So I'm making it look like we have that blend from red into uh, from red to magenta to purple. I eventually get the words out. Just give me time sometimes, you know, and it all depends on how much uh, caffeine I've had. So we're going to clean out some of this color. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I still want that little bit of red in there. So I still have a bit of red in here. That's all right because magenta is in the same color range. So it's all right if we have that little bit of red because it help, will help blend it. So now we're going to, with just magenta. So if we look at our picture here on the hand, or it blends from the red into magenta and then dark purple on the tips. We'll also start adding this. Sorry, the paper's folding. It'll start adding this into the wings. Excuse me. So this, I, I want it very translucent, very thin. So more uh, flow improver than paint. And how you can tell is you just pull your brush to the side of the cup where you can see the bristles coming through. So now we got, see how very watery it is. So you can just kind of see the hint of it right in there. Exactly what we want. Show it on the wing here. So with the, the brush, I'm starting from the, the tip of the fingers and I'm moving it up as I spray. 
<laughs> so do I. <laughs> I like it. Soap. So what I'm doing is... Kind of feathering it out. See how I'm building up the color right here at the, the front of it? <laughs> I'm pretty full. And then it's it's fading out back here. That's what I want. So now I'm going oh, too much there. That's okay, it's quite bright. I'm going to be adding that purple to it. And I want it to show through. We do it on the other hand. And now I'm going to add this onto the feet as a high, as highlighting. Yes, it's pretty bright, but I'm doing the same thing like I did with the red, where I'm adding the to um, I'm going to the extreme highlights and then uh, glazing it down. off camera. Sorry about that. So it's so thin, I can come back in. It's it's dried, I can come back in and add another layer to build up that brightness and the opacity of it. It's chicken legs. I've dubbed him Chicken Man because he has all these feathers and such. <laughs> Believe me, I was very tempted to paint him like a bright yellow. But I'm not sure if the uh, client would agree with that. This is a commission piece. I do do commissions. So. On occasion, I will paint my own models, but usually it's commissioned. So just doing the same thing, just bringing up the, the bright highlights on like the knuckles, and I'm off the camera, sorry.
kind of hard to stay in, stay in the camera with these big guys. Go ahead. I add the magenta here on the the wings. So we're going to have a blend of uh, purple through magenta up to turquoise and then um, on the larger portion of the wing, the larger feathers, it's going to be uh, like a dark blue black going up to bright turquoise. I'm not going to sit there and highlight every single one. So I'm using it at, instead of doing every individual feather, I'm doing it as a whole to where it's be brighter up here. And then as it curves down, it'll be darker. Same thing that you would do with hair. You wouldn't necessarily highlight, paint and highlight every single strand. As you can see here from the zenithal, it's this center part is, you know, I'm seeing I use it as one piece and painting the raised area is brighter so you can see where the shadows are and where the highlights are. So instead of sitting there and painting every single uh, strand, um, you know, that would just take forever. But painting it as a whole, just like, um, a, a, you know, muscles. So like right here, as you see where it gets brighter with the, the zenithal, the, the ink, the white that I painted over the black, this gives me an idea of where I'm gonna lay my highlights and shadows. So it gives you uh, basically a roadmap of where you're gonna have those highlights and shadows. Thank you, Cor. So when I go in with, because I'll do like a thin uh, dark wash to help separate these out so I don't have it where it's just this big splotch of magenta, um, I will go in and kind of hit like right here where the light's catching. Those areas I'll add brighter highlights just to kind of show the texture of the feather. Because feathers aren't one single piece, they have you know, those little lines to show the individual pieces of the feather. But doing it this way, I get the majority of my color down. Oops. Not like that. Paint was gathering up on my on the needle as I was talking. That's all right. Those mistakes happen. I will touch that up with the washes, so it's no biggie. Worked 
to my advantage. No mistakes, just happy accidents. Not an accident. We'll just paint it like a bird. Now it's a bird. Alright. Zoom out of here for a second. So he's starting to come together. Now I want to um, go back to my transparent purple very thinly and add that purple fade out onto the hands and then add it over here on the, uh, the feet. But I kind of want to go back in and add some more highlight with this color. Just to make it a little bit brighter. So when I add that transparent on there. Yes, you may you can use washes for contrasting. Yeah. I probably want to use orange to Oh, the contrast to the black. Yeah, purple would work, orange would work. Yeah. Great way to um, figure out your contrasting. If you know your simple uh, color theory. I think I have the, yes, I do. Hold on a minute. If I can reach it here. My color wheel. As I get stuck in the drawer. Hold on a minute. As I break my shelving unit to get what I need to get. That's what I want. That's something that I should have on hand. So this is your color wheel. This is just a little um, you can pick up at any art store. But you have your uh, primaries, red, blue, and yellow here. And then you have your secondaries, violet, orange, and green that make the that make your uh, normal colors. So of a nice contrast is you would use the opposite of the wheel. So let's say you're doing red. If you added some green into the shadow or even a blue, that would contrast very nicely. The um, this side of the wheel, the red, orange and yellow are what considered warm colors. On the opposite is your blue, violet and green, which are considered cool colors. So contrasting where you have a blue and then orange on on your model that will contrast really nice so if you were to do like a dark blue like a blue black if you had black and you were highlighting it up with some blue which is would give you kind of a cool in that spectrum uh, black and then having a little bit of orange on like a spot color like a certain area let's say he has um Let's say it's a robot and he has eyes, make his eye, make the robot that blue black tone and then give his eyes a um, glowing orange and that'll contrast really nice. Yeah, this one, is, they're not that expensive. Uh, I think this was like a buck, maybe two bucks at most. They have bigger ones, but this one's really nice. 
and you can figure out, you know, by switching, you know, turning it around. Like here, this part here is all ch changes. And this shows you roughly the, you know, the, the you know, what happens if you add yellow to, a vi to violet, you get a brown. Red, if you add white, you get a pink. And it also has the gray colors on it. Yeah, I think this was like a dollar to two bucks. You can get these on Amazon for, or at any art store. So you can rotate it. So here is the complementary colors, blue to orange. And then like your triad blue, you know, your typical color wheel, blue, yellow, and red, those look very nice together too. And it doesn't have to be a bright yellow or a bright red and bright, bright blue. You could have, um, let's say he's a, as a robot or he's a spaceman and he has, and you paint him blue, but he has some leather on him. You can do that a reddish brown. And then you could, and say he's got some trim, you can make that gold, so it's yellow. So you would have your primary complementary colors together. And you can do the, sec the opposite with green, violet, and orange. So yeah, this is, a, uh, this is really a, a great little color wheel, and it, it tells you all the difference, you know, definitions and stuff so definitely pick up one of these it's great to have on hand and that was my brief little introductory to color theory <laughs> so for this guy we'll look at the the painted picture he's got warm skin tones <laughs> thanks andy thanks for the support <laughs> so he's got warm skin tones, the red, but the shadows are purple, so it's a cool, cool color, and that complements with it. Same with the wings to the warm skin. We have the tips of the wings going into that cool blue turquoise color. So here we got... You know, we have the blue, red, and yellow. The yellow is the gold. And then the bones are kind of a yellowish, a pale yellow color. I just showed, I just told you th color theory. <laughs> That's color theory in a nutshell. If you do uh, searches like on YouTube and such, you know, there's far more into it. But yeah, that's the, the big, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, I have ascended. Yeah, once you get an idea of you know how that works, then figuring out um, color schemes is great. And then you start to see it's like, oh, that's why they chose those colors because they harmonize with each other. If you look at um, a Space Marine from Warhammer Forty Thousand. They're blue. They're, the majority of them is blue. To contrast against the blue, their shoulder rims are painted a gold, which is an, a yellowish, orangish tone. So that you have that contrast right there. And um, their eyes are painted red. So you have the primary colors right there where the predominant color is blue. The um, 
Then you go to the Dark Angels, which are green, predominantly dark green, and they have, you know, red lens eyes. So it's a small, what they call spot color. So it's a small area compared to the larger power armor being green. And then the uh, Stormcast Eternals on Age of Sigmar for the fantasy is the opposite of an ultramarine, where the main colors for them, their armor is gold, an orangish gold, and then on their shoulder pads, they're, they're blue. Then you can get into even more theory of behind stuff. If you want a figure to look like he's um, relatively rich or he's fortunate enough to buy pricey stuff, you can paint him in colors of purples, uh, dark blues, and golds that shows royalty. Ah, because those were very pricey items. So if you had, if you showing that you have a long purple cloak or shirt, uh, it's like, oh, you can tell right away that, oh, he's he's got some money. He's got some gold. To where the uh, peasants... They're in um, drab colors, like grays or browns. Because those materials were much easier to make, and you don't need a whole lot of money to make those items. Yeah. You're welcome. There was a dark elf character that I painted on stream, I believe about a week, two weeks ago, something like that. And the story behind him, he was a dark elf, but he was hired by a very rich wizard. And he was kind of like the bodyguard of this wizard. So he had money and he wanted to show it off. And flaunt it. So that's why I painted them in um, very lavish, dark purple, royal purple. That's why it's called royal, because it's royalty. Uh, royal purple and bright gold. Color contrast, nice. But it also added to the story behind them. I believe it's um, a vlog. It's one of the videos down below. Um, the next day or two, I'm going to start transferring a lot of the videos that I've done on Twitch over to my YouTube channel. So they're saved for posterity. All right, so basically what I was doing here while I was talking is I was making up some um, very thin of the transparent purple. And we're gonna do that same motion where we're starting from the tips and moving back. So I wanna make sure that it's quite thin. I'm gonna keep adding some more uh, flow improver. So I want to make it really, really thin and build up that color gradually. So if you would like to see any of my previous videos or um, videos that I've done on how to paint, please check out my YouTube channel. So, uh, it's under KC Holt, if you do a search for K, C Holt, the initials K, C, and then H O L T for Holt.
I have a lot of my previous Twitch streams on there. All right, so I'm gradually building up this purple on his hand. And because it's so pale, it will still show the highlights. And I'm getting progressively uh, brighter and darker towards his tips. <laughs> it's easy, it's fun. But you enjoy that one I painted for you, the green, the green flower girl. <laughs> it is, it's really fun, it's really easy to do. I have some other ones that I'll, that I'll have to paint up similar. I need to do another one that's the green skin because I've learned a lot from that, how to make it look better. I have a uh, another demon girl that I'm working on that I'm going to be painting very similar to the skin tone of this one. I need to get that model again. That was such a cool model to paint, Andy. No, yours is not defective. I learned a lot from it. I'm not saying defective. <laughs> but I definitely want to get that model again. That was a fun model. So now I see it. you have this transition of purple going up into the red. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the link to my YouTube. <laughs> core, core coming in with uh, the link help. So now I'm going not all the way down. I'm going about midway here. So I'm making it a little bit darker on his fingertips. Because of that pale color underneath, you can still see the highlights on it. So same here on his feet. This is what's considered underpainting because I'm painting and then putting a thin layer over on top. So it's showing the highlights underneath. So it's very thin layers over one on top of each other. <laughs> well, thank you. I definitely appreciate it, Cor. I I have a um, a bot. I just haven't set it up to do that. So so when you're not here, I can have that going on. <laughs> So just uh, spraying more down at the feet to add more, uh, to make it more rich in color, add more opacity, even though it's a very thin paint, very thin layers building up that up, uh, the intensity of it.
So it looks like he's got like purple gloves. <laughs> Amanda Toast, thank you for the follow. Welcome. How are you doing today? Welcome to the potato farm. <laughs> Toasted. My name's Casey. Welcome. I'm painting a uh, Magnus the Red. Were you out today in the heat? I'm sorry. Thankfully, it's that it was uh, much cooler today than the last two days. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad that it's off of your name and you weren't out in the heat. It's starting to get hot out there, so. So I'm just adding this purple on the feathers here. What I do here is I paint miniatures and I talk about it. Answer questions from other hobbyists or just chat in general. These are uh, miniatures, actually this one's a uh, bigature in that sense where he's, you know, the size of my, oops, size of my hand, quite big. These are for uh, tabletop gaming, if you do not know, or board games, role playing games. Majority of the models are made out of plastic. Some are made out of resin, and some are made out of pewter metal. So this was a plastic kit that I put together, and now I'm painting him up. He is uh, a demon for Warhammer 40,000. This is a paint guide I'm going by, making him look closer to this. Warhammer 40,000 is a science fiction tabletop game by Games Workshop. A gaming company. Yeah, he'd be better. He'd be great at music trivia. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think he is a fan of Madonna, like early Madonna, and her Vogue period with these uh, nipple horns. <laughs> He's going to be a very colorful model. He's got red, purple, uh, magenta. We're going to have um, the wings. I'm going to repaint these up here, but they'll be like turquoise. So he's a very brightly colored model. Oh, forgot this part. I'm using an airbrush right now for the majority of the work. And then I'll go in with the regular paint brushes and paint them up. All right. So definitely feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Yep, 
Let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and add some blue. I got a transparent blue. We'll add that in there and just go ahead and spray the rest of the wings. Get them prepped up for that. I'm not worried about adding any uh, flow improver to it because I'm just base coating with it. Getting it prepped for the turquoise. At this point, I need to be very careful down towards the model because I don't want to get any overspray with the blue on his red skin. Really playing, playing a dangerous game there. <laughs> Just making sure I don't get any of that overspray. That's what's great about with this thin, the, the very tiny needle, detail needle. tips of the feathers here. It just looks shiny because it's still kind of wet. So it will dry, you know, like this matte, so it's not so shiny. I am not going to get underneath there with the airbrush because I'm afraid I'm going to get some of the blue on the skin, so I'll just use a brush on that part. Know your limits. And then right here between the two colors, I'll just go in with a brush and paint this in there.
And the same here. I don't want to, I'm not going to start spraying here because his arm is right there. That's the worst when you spend so much time on doing something and you get an overspray. So, but that works up the, the wings. Give me an idea of overall how the, the model is going to look. All right, so I'm just going to use this color to, to kind of do some shading on his feet as I knock over stuff. Impressive wingspan getting in the way. here on the hand. Just to emphasize the shadows. Zoom him in real close so you can see. So now I got the majority, I got pretty much the, the airbrush done. All the work I want to do with the airbrush done. All the rest of the areas I'll come back in with a brush and um, you know redefine, add some more dark shadows into it. Do details on his face and all the other stuff on his wings. I got some really nice blends from the dark purple going into the red here, which is really a benefit of having an airbrush works really well. I could do this all with a hand with a with a brush by hand. Um, but I find it so much easier with the airbrush. The more I, I work with it. And we got this nice transition of the the on the legs. The staff getting in the way there. And then the wings. We're getting a good start on how the wings will look. We'll zoom out here. Show the whole model. But yes, he's quite impressive. So I'll be adding some more work on him uh, tomorrow. I'm not sure if I will be continuing working on him on Friday stream. I might. Depends on how far I get um, tomorrow during the day, during my work day. So, but all right. Well, thank you all for coming in and sh uh, sharing this day with me, watching me paint. I really do appreciate the new uh, followers. Andy, it's wonderful to, that you came and joined us. Cor, as usual, thank you for helping out. And for the new follower, Amanda, thank you for stopping in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check to see if there's any other, um, other painters going on or people that we can raid. <laughs> that is my Instagram account right there. That course popped up. Thank you once again. I also have a Discord, Twitter, all the fun stuff. So we'll wait a bit so he can pop all those up. <laughs> so you can continue on the fun. On my uh, social media stuff, I uh, post 
uh, work in progress pictures and also completed pictures. So you can see what they look like. All right. Well, thank you all. Let's go ahead and see if who else is that we can go raid. All right. We can go. Uh, Nikki Coles is on right now. And she's a wonderful painter. So we'll go and raid her. Send her some some love. So hold on one second as we type that in. I will be back Friday starting at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So definitely, if you haven't already, click on the follow button so you can keep up the date of when I am uh, streaming. So I stream Monday, to, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 3 p.m. I usually do about between two and three hours. So, <laughs> raid the fridge, Andy. Yeah, it's time for uh, dinner for me, so I'll be heading out. So thank you all. Uh, let's go ahead and see what Nikki is painting. So thank you all, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Do 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 do